Recently, I've had a few people contact me with questions about halos and how to avoid them. Now, there's two ways that halos come in and that people are interested in. One is when you're adjusting an image, just generally, and I'll cover that in a different video. The other is around sharpening, and when you sharpen the image, it can create halos. So in this video, I'm going to talk about sharpening halos, how to avoid them, and what you can do if you do see them and you need to correct them. Now to start with, we need to understand what are sharpening halos and what causes them. And for that, I've created a sharpening wedge, which you can see on screen. Now, if you look at the wedge and nothing's been done to it at the moment, you can see there's a very clear distinction between black at the top and white here, and also down at the bottom where you've got the black and white. As you move in towards the center, you'll notice the distinction between the two gets less and less. And that's because the difference in contrast between the two wedges is very little in the center. They're both going to gray at about the same point. And so you can't see an obvious line. Now let's have a look at what happens when we apply the unsharp mask to this layer. Now the reason I'm using the unsharp mask is it's very easy to see what's going on. We've got three controls. One is amount, the other is radius, and one's threshold. The amount is what controls the strength of the sharpening. And the way that the sharpening works is it looks for edges in the image. So here you've got an edge between black and white. And if we increase the amount, it will sharpen that edge and make it more obvious. But it needs to work in combination with the radius. Now what the radius does is it says how wide an edge will I create when I enhance the contrast. So watch what happens if I set this now to a radius of one. What will happen is that we'll get one pixel on either side of this edge sharpened as we move the amount slider out. So as I move out to about 100%, you can see very, very faintly an edge coming in here. I'm using this sharpening wedge magnified at 200%, just so you can see this effect more clearly. So let's move the radius up now to about 5, so we can see really clearly what's going on. And as you can see, this edge has thickened up, and that's because we're increasing the contrast by five pixels on either side of the edge. And at the moment, we've only got the amount set to 100. Watch what happens as I push this up. And we'll push it all the way up to 500. And you can see that the contrast adjustment on that edge is really, really clear now. And the only area where it doesn't affect it is right in the center here, where we've got virtually no contrast between the two sharpening wedges. So the sharpening radius is the thing that determines how wide this is sharpening or this sharpening effect goes. So at five, what we're seeing here is an edge or a halo, a sharpening halo. Sharpening halos have to be present, otherwise there is no sharpening effect. When people pixel peep in at 200% and so on, you will always see some sort of halo. And the reason for that is because the sharpening effect relies on it. If you didn't have it, you don't have any sharpening. The trick is to reduce the radius to a level where it's not seen as obvious. In this case, we've reduced the halo right down. If I was at 100%, you wouldn't notice that halo very much at all, but it's still there. The other thing that's happening here is that this strength slider is adjusting the contrast enhancement. So the higher I go with that, the more obvious the sharpening halo becomes. So two things there. One is the amount or the contrast level of contrast adjustment that's applied. And two is the radius or how wide an area is it applied over. And by controlling those two things, you can actually control the halos. If I turn off the preview, you might be able to see there that there is a small amount of sharpening being introduced by these settings. Now let's go back to a five pixel radius because I need to show you what the other slider does as well. So again, we'll just push this up so you can see it quite obviously. The threshold slider tries to detect at what level the sharpening effect will be applied. Effectively, what it's doing is it's making a contrast assessment between two adjacent pixels. Now, in the center here, there's no sharpening being applied because the pixels are roughly the same value. 
If I push up the threshold, watch what happens. Now you can see there is no sharpening being applied in a much larger area. Effectively, there needs to be a much higher contrast adjustment between adjacent pixels for the sharpening to be applied. If I pull that back down, you can see the sharpening effects coming in around here now. And if I pull it back down further, it moves in towards the center and you can see more areas being sharpened. So that's the third way you can control your sharpening. So first one is by making sure that you're using a low pixel radius, let's say one. Don't push the contrast or the amount up too high. And also use the sharpening threshold so that your adjustments are blended more evenly into the image. And that way you're creating a sharpening effect that hasn't got obvious halos. There are still halos there and you will see them if you zoom in far enough but they're not so obvious as to be distracting. So there's a sharpened layer and there's an unsharp layer. And you can see, if you look very carefully around the center, that there is a nice sharpening effect, but it's not obvious. And if I come back to 100% magnification, you can notice it's very faintly sharpened, but it's not sharpened too far. So let's zoom back in and let's apply another unsharp mask. So I'll use the background layer again. I'll just duplicate it. I'll pull it to the top and we'll sharpen it because the other one had been sharpened. But this time I'm going to apply quite severe changes and we'll put in a higher radius so you can see it. I'll lower the threshold and we'll use a radius of about three this time so you can still see the halo. So what can you do in a situation like this? What we know is that the adjustments are driving pixels to become either lighter or darker in order to enhance them along edges. I'm now going to access the blending styles. If I double click on this layer, I open up my layer styles and I've got this blend if option down here. Now watch what happens when I move the slider. So watch the line here, the black and the white, if I move out here, the black enhancement disappears. And if I take the white level and I move that in towards the center, the white adjustment disappears. So what this blending option does is it gives us the ability to prevent the darkest areas becoming too dark and the lightest areas becoming too light. So if I move this into around 10 and this down into around 245, what we're effectively doing is saying to Photoshop, don't make any blend where the darkest areas and the lightest areas have been enhanced, because otherwise we'll see the sharpening effect being applied to the darkest and lightest pixels, causing them to go to black and white. And that makes halos more obvious. The other thing we can do is we can move this slider, or we can split this slider and move it in. So if I hold down Alt on my keyboard or Option if you're using a Mac and I now click on it, I can split the slider and move it in. And I can do the same with the white slider. Now what's happening is that gradually Photoshop's blending this adjustment layer between these values. So the left part of this slider is saying this is where the blending starts and it gradually increases in strength until it reaches this right side of the slider. Between these two points, the strength is at full effect, and then it starts to tail off again between these two level points. And by doing this, I can affect where the blending actually occurs. So you can see there, it's limited the effect and it's made it not as strong. Now the other thing I can do as well is reduce my opacity. It's still too wide in terms of the radius, but it's actually now more blended into the image. And if I go back to 100%, you'll see it's not quite as severe as it was previously. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you as well. And for that, you need to look at an image. Now if I zoom into this image to 100%, and I start to look along the edge of this rock, you'll notice there's actually a bit of a halo. And if I zoom into 200%, it becomes a little bit clearer. 
and in again at 300% and you can start to see there is a little bit of an, a halo being created here. Now that isn't a sharpening halo. What that is, is a contrast edge. And this is how digital cameras work. So everyone who goes pixel peeping and goes, well, I've got a halo around a sharp high contrast edge. That's natural. That's what you see. So don't go trying to get rid of halos that don't exist and that aren't caused by sharpening. These will occur. You only have to take a picture of some branches against a bright sky to see that if you zoom in, you'll see halos around those edges. So don't go looking for problems where there aren't any. At the end of the day, if the halos aren't distracting and the image looks good, then there isn't a problem. I hope you found this useful. I'm Robin Worley. You've been watching Lenscraft. I'll see you next week for another video.